Hello, welcome back everyone. Today we thought we would do a continuation of our last video on the jab. There were some things we didn't get time to go through last time and some other cool stuff on the jab that we thought we might show you today. I am KH. I am Michael. And let's do this. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you guys today is uh, just a um, simple thing on the jab that it's very important to remember. And that is that when you do your jab, you never want to just stay in center and jab like this. Because if I'm jabbing Michael and I'm not moving my body and my shoulder with me on the punch, it's very easy for him to counter me as I'm coming in straight. Ba bam And even in the middle, he can get me in the middle because I'm very squared, very squared up. Bam. So you always want to lean a little bit to your right side on your jab. You want to go behind your shoulder like this. If he's punching squared and I'm punching with my body to the side, I there. he might hit me on the top of my head, but I might I will get a better hit on him. So always turn to your side with your punches. Never punch only with your arms. So that's the first thing. And on that, I thought I might show you a couple of things with the counter that we had um, on the jab. So if Michael is jabbing and I'm here, I can counter him with my right hand. But if I don't have that reach, if he's very a uh, quick guy or he's longer than me, it's not always that easy to counter with your right hand. So what we wanted, what you can do instead is you can slip. Yeah. Hang on. And I can go in with my jab instead. So if you feel your opponent is out of your reach when you're trying to counter with your right hand on the slip. You can go to the side and slip and go in with your jab instead. Alright, so that's countering with your jab. Uh, another good thing to do as a routine, if you're doing combinations, you're working on pads, you should um, try to finish with your jab or maybe finish with a double jab. So come about there. Yeah, come about there. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a one-two even, one-two, jab, jab. If I'm doing a one-two hook, um, yeah, a lot of combinations, most combinations you can, it's a good habit to just put in your double jab in there or just a simple jab. I've gone one, two. I don't want to be here. I want to go out. Either I prefer to go to the side, but you can also just use your jab to get back to your distance. Or, for example, one, two to the side. Bang, bang. From, and you can continue from a new angle. But just to get the habit of putting on a jab or a double jab after your combinations is a good thing to bring into your fighting game. It can also be very unexpected for your opponent because when you're throwing the jabs after a combination, because usually after I throw a combination he wants to attack, and then yes. it would be nice to follow up with a couple of punches. It can be really unexpected. Exactly. All right. Another, another cool thing I wanted to show you guys that we kind of, we did it a little bit on instinct when we were just doing some touch uh, sparring and we were showing the combinations but I never explained it so what you can do with your jab is to set up your feints so if we're moving I can throw my jab but it's not the jab that's important I'm throwing the jab to bring in my hook or I'm jabbing to go to the body I can jab to go with my right hand from a different angle uh, Fainting with your jab is also a very good tool. This can be 
There's so much you can do with feinting your jab. I can even just faint without throwing my jab. Or just... Yeah, I'll run a good whip in thumb and jab. Just uh, easily go. Yeah. And go. And just go. So, your jab is a very good tool to use as a feint for setting up your other punches. You can go with the right hand. Yeah, so many different things you can do there. One final thing with the jab is like, just like basic stuff, is that you're always, or not always, but most times you're punching with your jab to try to reach your opponent with your right hand. And that's just basic stuff, but again, this jab is just measuring my distance to Michael. I can use it. And as soon as, if this punch lands, or even doesn't even need to land, if at this punch, if my jab is close to him, and I turn my body, I have way more reach with my right hand. So if you're punching with your jab, and you're as close as we are, you definitely can reach your opponent's face with your right hand. So that's the last thing is that you can use this jab also for measuring how far your distance is for using your right hand. Yeah. So we'll just do a couple of, we'll finish up with just some combinations and some uh, feigning and some light touch, touch sparring and we'll use our jab just to give you an example. We are going to show you how to combine your jab with your kicks all right so just simple this is like the most basic thing you can do with your jab for your front kick so I can throw my jab out just to get his guard up now I got this opening here for my front kick so I go here very easy basics the basic kickboxing and if I, if I don't want him attacking me after the front kick, I can put in a jab or a double jab after that. Okay. So one of the things I like to tell people is to have basically the same principle. I go in with a jab, I take the attention, I have the opening, and kick. Right on this spot. It's good for points, but you can do damage with it as well. You can also put it up as a rhythm. I go boom, boom. Then I'm training this reaction that you're seeing. He's lowering his guard, and then I can come up and kick to the head because he's expecting to block down. So I go one, boom. Two, boom. He's expecting it down. I'm kicking high. This is a very nice thing to try in your sparring. Couple of kicks to the body and then switch it up. Another thing you can do is more for low kicks really. Again, same principle, you're jabbing, you're stealing the attention. You go down and then after this, he will most likely step in and you jab again to stop the momentum. So you go 
kick, and stop. This is a very common technique to see in Thai boxing. They will throw that jab, follow up with the kick, and stop again with the jab. All right. Okay. Same thing that Michael showed earlier. I just have a little bit of my own uh, way to do that one. I like to, yeah, you can go to the body and stuff. I like to sometimes just go straight to the head with my round kick. But what I do is I punch my jab and I just keep my glove in his face. Because even though he's blocking his front side, I can still go around and get him on the side of the head or the chin. And I just keep my glove, glove in his face almost until I land my kick. Alright. Uh how in your car and so forth. Yeah, it's spinning. Yeah. So one thing to set up, uh, a more advanced technique is your jab. As I jab, I'm gonna move my foot off the line. Imagine we're standing on lines right now. This foot is connected to that foot and that foot is connected to that foot. This is called standing on the line. We're standing in front of our opponent. This is very common when we're trading blows. He's attacking for ball. But if I want to throw some spinning technique, I want to be off this line because I will have such a big opening that if I'm like here, he will have direct line of attack. So what I want to do is I'll throw my jab, I'll step off the line, boom, and then I'll kick to the body. This is a very good way to use a spinning attack. So you hide your step and then you kick. Do one last one for good measure. There we go. I was going to throw them a spinning heel kick or a You can do it with a spinning heel kick uh, if you want. And it's the same principle. Step off the line and up to the face. Mm. Be careful because I have shoes. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to hurt anyone. Yeah, I, because I love the sidekick, I use my jab a lot of times just to get that same opening as you had for the front kick, only for your sidekick. The difference is when I'm doing the front kick, I'm staying more in my boxing stance. And I could continue my boxing with my right hand or my hook. But when I'm doing it with the sidekick, I kind of line up the sidekick. As I'm jabbing, I'm turning my body. So I do the jab. Now I'm side faced. Because now I don't need to do anything. I've prepared my kick. So as soon as that jab lands and Michael lifts his guard, boom. Just another easy way to create openings using your jab. So that was just some additional stuff on the jab that we wanted to share with you. And yeah, try it out. Try it out on sparring. Try it out when you're shadow boxing. And let us know what you think. If you want to leave a comment, please do. If you like the video, do the usual stuff if you want to. You can share, you can like. Yeah. All right. Thank you for tuning in and take care. Bye, guys. I don't, I don't know. <laughs>